We are trusted partners right by your side. Evergreen Implement. For all your farming needs, we're your go-to guy. Evergreen Implement. Um, you'd run alongside it and count how many turns that tire went so you know how far you went and then you'd catch that amount of chemical then you'd have to go through the conversion and figure out well how many ounces an acre or gallons an acre you're putting on. Now we're doing it a little different. What we're doing, we're telling the computer this is how fast we're going and this is the amount of chemical we want to catch and we go out and do that. And so now we're letting the computer figure out everything. And then if we're off on that, we enter the new numbers and then it actually um, changes our flow meter calibration. On the John Deere with our flow meter calibrations, when you get them, um, there should be a silver dog tag on your display for your, or on the harness for your display. And that has your calibration numbers on there that you need to use. And they're normally pretty close to right. Um, if they're not exactly right, before I go changing that number a lot, I check your nozzle tips like we were talking because the flow meter may be right, it's just the tips are actually putting more out and that's why your pressures are different than um, you're expecting. For the others, for the Ravens being, we're running a Raven or Microtrack or some other brand of flow meter on a John Deere rate controller, we have to calibrate it to know what that number needs to be. So sometimes the number is right, sometimes like Microtrack, for the anhydrous you multiplied it by 2.17 I think, and for the liquid you did the other day it was 5 <laughs> point something. Um, so it, it's hard to tell what that number is going to be until you actually calibrate it. But that number when you're done, assuming you're operating everything right, that number is going to be um, really close to what you're actually putting on. Um, I guess speaking of operating right though, when we talk about our section control that we have on there, controlling turning booms on and off, what are we doing with it? We're measuring it from where a receiver is to where that spray nozzle is. And then we have to figure out how long the delay is from the computer telling it, turn the valve on, the pressure's dropping from 40 PSI, then having to climb up to 60, and we need to figure that out. And you could go through and you can figure out a lot of it out. It's really hard with a sprayer to figure out how many tenths of a second you need to go. There is some um, literature on stellar support that tells you what that distance is so you know how. Um, but go ahead and go to the rate controller setup of the um, section control. What makes a difference on it is that time. Um, we have our um, turn off and turn on times. So. Okay, our turn on is one second, turn off is six tenths. So the turn on, we have our line right here. That sprayer, we want that to be spraying when it hits here, and so that's coming on one second early. That's fine maybe at eight miles an hour. Even that speed on the sprayer, we're good up until probably about 10 miles an hour, nine to 10. But let's say you hit that at 12 miles an hour, then you didn't start spraying until right here. You're off three feet. So if you're going 12 miles an hour, it's roughly 1.2 seconds. So two tenths of a second isn't a whole lot unless you have three feet of skip entering the field on that side, then exiting on the other side, you ran three feet long. So um, we need to be consistent with our speeds and once we get it set and we know it's set, if you change your speeds, you need to change that. Um, Normally, you're not going to be turning a corner at 12 miles an hour. Or, Dean, are you turning too many at that speed? Okay. But now if you go out to bluegrass field, you are going to because that was a smooth packed field to begin with. And so you're going to come down to it and here's Adrian cruising around and, well, he's a pull behind. So not quite 12 on him either. But he has that same thing on the John Deere rake controller because we got to look at that and we got to make sure that time is set to where we're not leaving those skips or we're not spraying long. Spraying along wouldn't be a bad thing unless it's your neighbor's field you're spraying into. Um, if you're making the corner, we have the boundary set up to where as soon as you go out of your field, it turns the sprayer off. Well, if you're off three feet, you have a three foot stretch, 90 feet wide or 100 feet wide that has just been taken care of for you. So play with that and make sure that's set up right. When we were talking about the self-propelled earlier and doing a 
um, nozzle calibration on those. Call them for me afterwards. That I can't do the nozzle calibration on the 30 series. Um, I believe on the hundreds you can, and the tens. Um, we can just do a pump calibration on there for the nozzle flow. So anyhow, that's what we're not doing on that. Uh, we can go through a self-test to do a nozzle flow check to test all those. But as far as catching it and stuff, we're going to do it on the self-propelled here. Um, so again, I told you guys we have to be safe here. I'm going <laughs> to use my gloves in my glasses. Believe it or not, I do carry them. Paul, what are we doing? Okay, we're going to do a nozzle, or calibrate the flow meter, we're going to do a catch test, and anybody wants to see anybody have cold behind, so that's going to go all behind. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, basically what we're going to do is go into our rate controller. Uh, we're on our rate controller, we're going to go into diagnostics down here. And then we're going to test. Hit that drop in the box, we're going to do a calibrate flow meter catch test. This is just telling us that we're going to have nozzle come in, or chemical come out our nozzles. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut off the section we're going to do. Let's uh, turn off all but these. What we're doing is turn all the sections off in three sections. Calibrate flow meter. We're going to tell the number of nozzles that we're going to spray, which he's counting right now. It has to know how many nozzles we're spraying. We got 17 nozzles. We're going to do a test speed. We're going to do 10 miles an hour. We're going to do a rate of 10 gallons an acre. And then basically, I think it's like 8 seconds or something has to be more, but we're going to throw 20, 20 ounces at one. We're going to tell it's going to catch 20, and we're going to spend 20 ounces. We'll see where that puts it. So it puts out 26 seconds. We're going to run this test. So, we have a foot switch now, operator. Turn that foot switch on, turn on. We're going to spray some spray here. Let you know. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is basically continue on. We'll go ahead and Jim's going to catch him for us. We got the mask switch off. Go ahead and turn the mask switch on. So the mask switch is turned on. Now all we got to do is hit start. <laughs> I would have sprayed rust, and you would have loved that. Yeah. So here we go, we'll hit start. It was actually going to, going to go through its own, own calculations here and say, okay, I sprayed out 20 ounces out of all those nozzles. You're going to keep, keep catching until they shut off. gives us basically seven seven catches we can do here. Fifteen and sixteen. We'll do we'll put our first sample at fifteen ounces. Second sample at sixteen ounces. We'll accept that one it is. We got our old old flow meter calibration at seventy, it changes to ninety. So we can actually go through and, and figure out our flow meter calibration by doing this catch test. We'll do it a few more times. Yeah. Um, it took a little while. Okay. Yeah, the other thing we noticed on this, we were talking about flow checks earlier. This one right here, everything else shut off, just kept running. So this flow check wasn't working. So what it did was it drained more of the liquid out of that boom. And so now we got extra on that catch test. If you're doing liquid fertilizer sometime or a sprayer that doesn't have those uh, flow checks on there, you got to catch every single um, spray nozzle off that boom because you need everything that's going to drain out of there because it drained out beforehand. And if you're doing one down here, one at the top, you're not going to be accurate with it. So we'll try it one more time and we'll try some different ones. We're going to go through and turn off all the sections of these right three. We're going to calibrate again. We're doing 17 I would do nozzles. the same ones again. What's that? I would do the same ones again. Yeah, well, before the end of the day, I will. <laughs> Test speed 10. 
great 10 gallon nigger, it's only 20 ounces of what we're asking for. We got the master switch on, are we ready? Yep. We get started again. You can, but you're going to be just playing for the one meter. Um, I just wanted to talk to you guys. I do have to kind of do that. I don't kind of know. It's based on the length of your whole one meter calibration. Maybe bump it up to two or three. I'm not going to do big increments. It's like small increments. It's not dialed in there. But you can that. You can also do a that did our, we started off with 70 on our original, we went to 90, and if you notice when we first started that test, we had, had a lot of air in there, but he still caught that, we put that 15 in, we went to 90 on our calibration number, and we just did that catch test, we're back down to 72. 70 is where we started, which is actually the tag number on the flow meter, so by doing more catch tests, we'll get a more accurate read on that flow meter, like and Tim was saying. The, the more you catch, the better off you are, and you can do more than 70, because you have another, hold another page on the too. But the thing is, do more than just one because if we had just done that first one, it would have been different, and then you might find a bad tip in there. We haven't looked at the tips yet. We'll kick this on for long just to do a nozzle flow test, just to see what all the tips look like. Um, we, I'll grab some other tips and we can put them on there so you can see different styles of tips and stuff too. So, um, when we were doing that, we were measuring everything. Um, let's go ahead and do a nozzle flow check. So we can see. Um, one thing that you have on the other sprayer, you notice we went in, we put a minimum pressure in there, so we knew exactly what the pressure would go down to. On this, we don't have that option on the pull behind, but you do have a minimum flow you can go down to. And so it's nice to go in and know what your minimum flow is, so we can treat it just like that pressure sensor, never drop below a certain gallon age, which we know it takes a little bit of time to figure out what that pressure is at. But that way we know it, it's not ever going to be shutting down on us. So, yeah. Yeah, all turned on or? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to turn them all on again. Go by and look at your pattern. If you're in light right, you can see it really good. Um, and you, you can see if you have bad nozzles. You can see if you have anything dripping. Um, so how, what kind of pressure is that? Small enough to know you, large enough to serve you. Your locally owned John Deere dealer, Evergreen Implement.